In this section we're talking about geometric sequences, which are different from arithmetic sequences. For a geometric sequence, you know it's geometric if the ratio between the terms remains the same. So if the ratio between these two numbers, and these two, and these two, and these two, if those remain the same, then it's a geometric sequence. So what we do is we put 125 divided by 625, and we find out that's 1 -fifth. Then we do 25 over 125, that's equal to 1 -fifth. 5 over 25 is equal to 1 -fifth, etc. So this is how we tell this is a geometric sequence. If it doesn't do this, it might be another type of sequence, but it's not geometric. If you know it's a geometric sequence, it's going to fit into this formula. That's a sub n equals a1, that's the first term times the common ratio r, in the last example that r would have been 1 fifth, to the n minus 1 power. So for example, the nth term of a geometric sequence with the first term of 3 and the common ratio of 2 looks like this. You would plug in some number for n and get some value for a n. Like let's say you want to know what the fifth term was, you'd plug in 5 and then you'd see what the fifth term would be for a n. It says write a rule for the nth term of the sequence and find a sub 7. So first we got to check that it's a geometric sequence. We'll do that by finding the ratio. 20 over 4 is 5, 100 over 20 is 5, 500 over 100 is 5. We know this is geometric, we're good. Um, we know that the ratio is equal to 5 because that's what we get when we divide those terms. Then we're going to use the general formula a sub n equals a1 times r to the n minus 1 plug in the information we have. a sub n equals a1, the first term is 4, so I put 4 times 5 to the n minus 1. That's the equation, so that's the rule for the nth term, and then it says find a sub 7. That means you... So that's the rule for the nth term of the sequence, then find a sub 7. Um, what that means is we want to know what a is equal to when n is 7. So a sub 7 is equal to 4 times 5 to the 7 minus 1. If it says find a sub 7, we're really plugging that in for n to see what a equals when n is 7. That's what a sub 7 means. So 4 times 5 to the 6th power, that's 4 times 5 to the 6. We're going to evaluate this first because exponents come first, then we'll multiply times 4. And we get our answer as 62,500. So a sub 7 is equal to 62,500. So it's really nice when you know the first term and you know the ratio, because then you can just plug it directly into this formula with the first term and the ratio. Um, but sometimes they don't tell you the first term. Like here they're telling us the fourth term is 12, a4 is 12 and the ratio is 2. So we actually need to find the first term if we're going to write the rule. So the way we do that is just by using the formula still. So a sub n equals a1 r n minus 1. We'll plug in what we have. Um, we know that 12 is equal to this when n is 4. So 12, it's equal to 12 when a sub 1 times the ratio um, is when n equals 4. That's what a sub 4 equals 12 means. I know it seems kind of opposite, but you really need to think that when n is 4, the thing's equal to 12, so that term's equal to 12. So if we do this, we can solve for a sub 1 and find the general formula. So we have 12 equals a1 times 2 cubed. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So then we have 12 equals a sub 1 times 8. a sub 1 equals 12 over 8, which is 3 halves. So I solved a sub 1 equals 3 halves. Now I can just write the general rule. That's a sub n equals 3 halves 
times 2 to the n minus 1. The gen remember, the general rule is going to have a sub n and n. It's not going to have anything plugged in for those. It's just like how a general equation has x and y. You can think about n as x in this case and a sub n as y. So this is the general rule for the sequence. So in order to graph it, I mean, we can use a graphing calculator quite easily. So we're just going to set it up. I mean, a sub n is just y, so equals 1.5 times 2 to the x minus 1. We're just using x instead of n. Um, you have to be very careful here because you really want to have that 3 halves in front times 2 to the n minus 1. 2 to the n minus 1 is its own term. So the way I did that is I put the whole thing in parentheses 2 to the n minus 1. And that n minus 1 needs to go in parentheses as well or else you're not typing 2 to the n minus 1. You're typing 2 to the n and then minus 1 graph it, um, check out the table, and we can just use this table of values. So at 0, it's at 0.75. We'll just put a dot. Okay, so at 0, there's a dot at 0.75. At 1, there's 1 1.5. 2, it's at 3. And we're just going to go ahead and dot those in on the graph and draw them. But I'll, I will also